Okay, today we're going on with solving linear equations, but this time they're going to have brackets. And we've got a couple of ways we can do it, and so I'm going to show you two methods. So the example here is we've got x plus 5 multiplied by 3 equals 18. So if we just have a look um, and we do the method that we were doing the other day, if you think about what I just said, I said 5 was added to x, and then we multiplied it all by 3. So because that was the last thing I said, I'm going to move the 3 over the equal sign. Now because the 3 is multiplying on this on the left hand side, it will divide on the other side. And then I'm going to fix that up. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. And then I'm going to move the 5 to get the x by itself. So the opposite to adding 5 is subtracting 5. So x equals 1. Okay, so that was the first method. The other method we could do is we could expand our bracket. So practicing what we did <clears throat> last. So we go 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 5 is 15. And equals 18. And then we can go about solving. So we'd move this 15 first. So we'd be left with 18 minus 15. So 3x equals 3. Now, because this 3 is timesing, it will divide on the other side. So 3 divided by 3 equals 1. <clears throat> so um, both x are okay. Whichever way um, you want to do it, that's fine. But sometimes it will, might make, be easier to do one way than the other. And we'll have a look at another example. So if we have a look at this 7x plus 2 equals 10... So if we go about solving it by moving this 7 first, we'd be left with x plus 2 equals 10. Now that 7 was timesing, so it will divide on this side. And then we're left with x plus 2 over equals 10 over 7. So we're going to move this 2 over, which would be minus 2. Now because of that, we've got fractions... We've got a fraction here, so we've got to subtract. So I might make that a fraction by putting it over 1. Now, when we subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to use 7s. Now, because I've times this one by 7, I have to times that by 7. So I end up with 10 minus 14. So x equals negative 4 over 7. <clears throat> so... I get my answer. Now if I did it the other way, so where I might expand out the brackets, so we do 7 times x, 7x, 7 times 2, so plus 14 equals 10. And then we go about solving it. So I'll move the 14 over, it'll become minus, so get 7x equals negative 4, and this x7 is timesing, so it will divide. So we get the same answer. You might want to use method 2 here because we didn't have to do fractions where method 1 involved fractions. So um, you might pick which way is easier when looking at it. Okay, so I've got a couple more examples to do. So looking at this one here, we've got n plus 1 or multiply by negative 6 equals negative 30. I can see that it'll be easier to move this negative 6 first. So I've left for n plus 1 on this side, and that negative 6 was timesing, so now it's dividing. So a negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. Okay, and now I'll move the 1 over, because I'm trying to get m by itself. Be 6 minus 1, m equals 5. So that was easier than expanding and <clears throat> I'm probably, if we do this other one, I can expand it out if you like. So trying the other method, it'd be negative 6y minus 30 equals negative 11. Okay, so I'll move this 30 first. So negative 6y equals negative 11 plus 30. So negative 6y equals neg um, 19 
Um, then we've got y equals 19 divided by negative 6. So, and we just like, we can't simplify this fraction anymore because there's no number that goes into 19 and 6, so we'll leave it as that, and that's an exact answer. So that's good. <clears throat>